Hi, uh, my name is Dawn Baker and I am an artist and a children's author and I live in Gander in Newfoundland and Labrador. And I'm going to take some time right now and read you one of the books that I wrote and that I illustrated and it is called A Newfoundland Christmas. And um, I did the story, but I also did the paintings for the illustrations. And one of them you can see right here behind me on the easel. And it is the uh, one that I did, as you can tell, for the cover. So uh, I decided to keep that one. And it's lovely to have it at Christmas time next to my fireplace with my little reindeer because uh, it makes a cozy little spot for me to sit here and read. So I'm going to start now and read this book for you. I hope that you like it. A Newfoundland Christmas. It was the last day of school before Christmas, but Sarah was not very happy. In fact, she was upset and a little angry. That morning, her mom had told her they were all going down home for the holidays. Her older brother Michael hadn't seemed very happy about it either. This is so unfair, moaned Sarah to her best friend. A few days later, Sarah and her family arrived at the home of her nan and pop. As Sarah stepped into the salt box house, she could smell cinnamon and ginger. Nan's eyes filled with happy tears as she hugged Sarah and Michael, and pop grinned widely. I'm way behind in my Christmas baking, fussed Nan, but the lassie bread is still warm if you'd like some and the Towtons will be ready soon. Sarah and Michael agreed that the warm, spicy bread full of plump raisins was the best thing that they had ever tasted. The next morning, Pop woke them a little early. Get up, you two scallywags, he bellowed. We've got a Christmas tree to get. They didn't go to a mall or even a Christmas tree lot. Instead, they strapped on snowshoes and stomped into the wooded area outside of the little outport where Nan and Pop lived. Pop let Sarah pick her favorite tree and he chopped it down with skill and ease. Michael helped to pull it home. That evening, Sarah and Michael helped Nan to decorate the tree. It filled the cozy home with the scents of the forest. As they were working, Michael heard something outside. It was music. When they looked through the window, they saw a Salvation Army band. It was playing Silent Night. Pop went to the door and put some music into the kettle. The music drifted in and around the bay for quite a long time. Finally, it was Christmas Eve. A great number of aunts, uncles, and cousins had come and gone. There were many tempting gifts under the tree, although Santa had yet to arrive. Nan coaxed everyone into their Sunday best for the late night service. The church bell rang out bright and clear through the frosty air. Snow began to fall. Ooh, doesn't that sound lovely? Just the perfect Christmas Eve. Christmas morning was loud and fun. Christmas dinner was tasty. Besides turkey and dressing, they ate salt beef and vegetables, peas pudding and gravy and figgy duff. After their wonderful meal, Sarah and Michael joined some of their cousins and new friends. They went sliding down Uncle Dave's hill, Sarah's new sled and Dad's old coaster took turns flying down the hill. A day later, Sarah watched as the snow melted from her double ball mitts. Drops of water dripped down and sizzled on the wood stove. She thought about earlier that day when they had gone for a sleigh ride. The sleigh had been pulled along by Buddy. He was Aunt Elizabeth's Newfoundland pony. Buddy was almost as white as the snow, and Sarah thought 
He was the most beautiful animal she had ever seen. A loud knocking startled Sarah out of her daydream. Any mummers loud in? Many voices shouted as a fantastic assortment of merrymakers burst through the door. There was laughing and dancing and singing and eating and teasing and guessing. Michael took a turn on the ugly stick and Pop played the button accordion. Most of the next morning was slept away. Nan told them they were all at risk of becoming hang -ashores. However, her eyes were twinkling as she said it. That afternoon, Michael joined in on a spirited game of scrap hockey. He was considered by all to be one of the stars. No one was quite sure which, so which side scored the most goals, but it was easy to declare the winners. Everyone. Time passed so quickly that Sarah found herself back home and back at school before she knew it. Her best friend was very happy to see her. How was your Newfoundland Christmas? Asked her friend. Was it as awful as you thought it would be? Sarah just smiled and replied, all I can say is that I sure hope we can go down home for Christmas again next year. And that's the end of the story. Of course, Sarah and Michael had a really great time in Newfoundland with their Nan and Pop and their aunts and uncles and cousins. They had a wonderful Christmas. And of course, they hoped at the end that they would be able to go back and have more Christmases there in the future. And I hope that all of you have a lovely Christmas this year and every year. And it doesn't matter what time of year it is, you can always check out this story anytime you feel like it and watch it here on YouTube. Thank you very much. Bye.